we've seen apparitions, we've heard voices. And I've been here myself and seen the stuff that's happened and it's kind of they pushed me out in one particular day. Uh, I was kind of like being forced out of the building. If you just sit and listen, this building will talk to you and the people in the building will talk to you. You don't have to go around searching for them. They'll come to you if they want to talk to you. The history began in 1870 with the Coles County Poor Farm, located in Ashmore, Illinois. By 1910, the condition had quickly crumbled. In 1916, following construction of what we observe today, Coles County Poor Farm operated over 40 years until 1958. During this time, the older residents were often called friendless and were sent here to die alone. Now forgotten, in the woods, those without family or friends are buried alone. To date, over 100 people have died within the walls of this historic building. By 1961, the Grand Lady of the Prairie had transitioned from Home of the Friendless to Ashmore Estates Psychiatric Hospital. Yet again, by 1979, horrible conditions continued. Cracked tile floors, peeling paint, no electricity, exposed wiring, and a boiler that hadn't been inspected. This was only the beginning for Ashmore versus the state of Illinois. Following countless violations, Ashmore permanently closed in 1987. Being abandoned from 1987 to 2005, a commercial haunted house from 2006 to 2014 this historical location was saved by Robin Terry. He's here to share his story on his love for the Grand Lady of the Prairie and why paranormal enthusiasts travel across the world to experience what it has to offer. The paranormal activities that happen here at Ashmore Estates are probably a little bit of both between the, the poor farm days when it was Coles County, uh, the Coles County Poor Farm, or it could have been from the hospital days when it actually did become Ashmore Estates. We've seen apparitions, we've heard voices, we've, you know, there's shadow figures throughout the building. There's areas in here that don't like women, and uh, women have experiences in this, in this particular area a lot. And it's just about anything that you want to experience in the paranormal, it happens here. When I've been in here working during the day, there's, I hear voices, and I'm not trying to investigate. I, I come in here to work, and uh, I hear voices in here. My wife's heard voices in here. And we've had people that have heard uh, people dragging stuff across the floor. I mean, I've been here myself and seen the stuff that's happened, and it's kind of the pushed me out in one particular day. Uh, I was kind of like being forced out of the building just because they didn't want me here. But it's there's there's energy here, there's spiritual energy here that sometimes doesn't want you to be able, involved in the building, doesn't want you in the building. In 2014, when I found out that the place was gonna be for sale, I made a trip over just to, to check the place out and see what was here. There was something on the second floor, and, and I'm not psychic or have any, any sensory, you know, 
abilities whatsoever, but there was something on the second floor walking down through there that said, help our building. I don't think the spirits wanted me to help them. They're perfectly content, I think, being here. This is their home. They enjoy being here, but they wanted me to help their building. It was in such bad shape. I think they realized that I could probably do something with it, and they wanted me to help with that location. And so that's uh, that was my first encounter was before I bought it. I spent a lot of time in here alone, and I've never had a situation um, that I've been that's really had a problem except one time in May of 2014 when there was something on the third floor right out by the nurse's station when I was hooking up electrical that didn't want me in the building. I pushed it for about an hour and finally said if you guys are having a party and I'm not invited I'll just leave and so I took off and went to a show store to pick up some materials to do work for the next day and I uh, just didn't come back in the building that night but that's the only time I've ever had any any type of negative feeling in the building whatsoever it's it's always been pretty helpful and pretty happy I think and, and I think at that point in time it was probably because they weren't sure what I was going to do and it might have might have worried them a little bit when I was doing some electrical work and they just they didn't know, know what was going on you know, from the first day I was here in the building, I think that the spirits in the building have realized what I'm doing and how I'm doing it, and they see me in here working and taking care of their building, because this is their building, this is their home, and I'm just privileged enough to be able to help them out. You know, from my experience and the experience of people that have been here throughout different investigations, I always tell people, sit and listen. There's a, there's a, wall, a, a mural basically at the front door, or just some writing on the wall that says, these walls can talk, open your mind and listen. And I think there's a lot of truth to that because if you just sit and listen, this building will talk to you and the people in the building will talk to you. You don't have to go around searching for them. They'll come to you if they want to talk to you. We've had that happen numerous times You know, when we had the building, people have been in the building. They just sit and watch and listen and it's amazing what people will find. Ashmore Estates is a very special location. It was an active poor farm and psych hospital for 71 years. When you think about that, and all of the people and residents and inmates that stayed here, we were going to be in the middle of all of it. TB brought us Ashmore Estates. Without it, we would have never known about it. Zeke and I live three and a half hours away. Through history and research on the location, there's more to Ashmore Estates than what's already been seen. For every obituary that come out of here, almost all of them said leaves no relatives, has no relatives. These people were just dropped off and abandoned? Yeah. This was like a home for the, the friendless, they would say. It's really sad. I know that in our research, we discovered that over 100 people died in this building. What happened? I just felt something brush on my neck. Ooh. Is my neck cold? Is your neck cold? Yeah, I feel my neck. Well, come back here, let me feel. That's the left side? Yep. That's the right side? Eh, I'd say a couple degrees. Does it bother you that people come and visit? I cannot help but think of the stories of the friendless, how you lived here alone, how you got through life alone, and how you died alone. Man, I feel really claustrophobic right now. Oh yeah? Yeah. You want me to come down there, buddy? Not yet. Not yet? Not yet. So I see a piano up here. Is this where you had Christmas? You know it's coming up soon. Did they treat you good here? I hope
hope so. What the hell was that? What happened? Oh, I was just cruising by and out of the corner of my eye, I just... Hey, this is that I just room. saw a shadow. I just saw a shadow, dude. Where? At the end of the hallway. Oh, yeah? See where the light's coming in? Yeah. Something just crossed it. Just as Nick heard something in the room next to him, I saw a shadow figure at the end of the hallway. The likelihood of this is slim to none, let alone having direct eye contact with it. This is something that I will never forget, and it will haunt me forever. I kid you not. Well, there's a big thump in here. What? Who's down there? Did I just see you walk by? Man, that was freaky. It walked right past the window. Blocked out the light? Yes, on the left panel. The left panel of the window there. Unreal. Huh. I hope that's on here. I haven't... With my own eyes, man, I have not seen a shadow figure in years. So are you telling us to come down this way? I asked for a sign, and you just gave me one, so thank you. The big... Wow. The $50,000 question. Did it come from here and go into here? The what? The shadow, or was it out in the stairwell? And did it come from downstairs? I don't know, but I'm getting major goosebumps right now. Oh yeah? Yeah. Are you tickled pink? Just talking about it makes me feel weird. Hmm. After our experience with the shadow on the second floor, Zeke and I decided to head to the third floor Heeding Robin's advice, we just wanted to continue our general walkthrough and listen to what the building had to offer. What made you so violent? Frust. Oh, I heard that, buddy. I just heard that too. You hear that? Yeah, we need to go out in the hallway and head down to the new addition. Yeah, we do. All right, so a few minutes ago, I asked if it makes you angry that we are here. And I heard noises back to back. I thank you for that. Thank you for using enough energy to show us that you are still here. What else can you do? What are you capable of? Well, you're over here with me now, aren't you? All sorts of electricity. And, yep, now, yep, it's right here. I'm in it. Is this where you would have holidays? In this room right here? Community gathering room. Do you miss those days? If that's the case, maybe there wasn't many violent people on this floor. I know that we don't find it fair that you were labeled that way feel that's your spot this is the second time I've walked over here and it just goes up my back and it's gone after we finished our walkthrough 
The energy in the building seemed to take a dip. Zeke and I returned to the equipment room to gather our gear to pick up where we left off on the third floor. Any uh, residents that are standing here making me feel funny, could you reach down and just touch this antenna? Like that, to show us that you're here with us? I just want you to know too, Nick, that in Hannah's room, I have a millimeter REM pod set up right on her little shrine. What's going on? Hey, you're touching that, huh? So if I come over here, will I feel your energy? Yeah, you took off running. That was really neat. So, you come back and turn that on, we'll start our communication session. Can you come back over here? Maybe it was because you were talking about Hannah's room. This whole section of the building seems very active right now. It's pretty good for being the new section too. Anybody in the old section, feel free to come on down and talk. Um, I'm going to turn the uh, spirit box on. You guys, the energy here that you guys have, you can manipulate this box to speak with us. You've done it before. Those lights are fun to play with. The more you touch it, the more they'll light up. So you got a green and a yellow to go off. You got a green and a yellow to go off. You got a green and a yellow to go off. What was that? That was loud. Zeke about got a chiropractic adjustment for free out of that one. Between this REM pod going off and that sound, this building is finally starting to warm up for us. Turning this on again. Something cold just went against my neck, man. Sounds like it just said I touched him. Did you touch him? Were you the one that touched him downstairs too? Decent? You don't know? That's what I heard. Getting a strong whiff of uh, ladies perfume. Is there a, a woman up here with us as well? What? Something just pulled on my shirt. Oh yeah? Something just pulled on my shirt. I have... Watch out for the rim pod, bud. Who just touched me? I have full body chills. Does it go down the back of your legs? Whole body. It just pulled on my shirt. On the arm of my shirt. It's got a really bad headache too. You putting pressure on him, are you? That was intense. That was a, a really intense feeling. By my reaction, 
and my little dance, you can tell that I was sincerely scared. On an honest level, this is something that I had never experienced before. I literally felt a spirit being walk up next to me, cup the back of my elbow, grab my shirt, and pull. After the sights, sounds, and scents that we experienced in the new portion on the third floor, we decided to move down the hallway to an old portion of the third floor and try to use the Spiritus application to see what we could find. What room did you stay in up here? Is he here? He's here. Yeah. I'm Wadi. A lot of tightness in my throat right now. What can you tell us about this Elva Skinner? Elba Skinner is Ashmore's Casper the Friendly Ghost. Everybody knows about her, and everybody talks about her. Before the investigation, we took a little time to visit the Ashmore Cemetery to pay our respects to Elba ourselves. She passed away in 1880 due to injuries sustained in a fire. She was only a child. Between Nick and I, there are two devices of the same. Walk through me to get to him. Walk through him to get to me. What was that? Did you hear that? Was that a little girl's voice? That was right next to me. That gave me the chills. Then I heard some movement down here. It sounded like a baby crying. Walk through him to get to me. What was that? Did you hear that? Walk through him to get to me. What was that? Did you hear that? I decided that since Zeke was getting touched and felt up all night, that maybe I could improve my chances by leaving my back wide open to a room behind me and blindfolding myself, then I could feel the same sensations that he was feeling. I'm getting a little chill right on my elbow right there. So out in the hallway, while we were also conducting this experiment. We have set up the laser grid. What's wrong? What's wrong? You hear those footsteps? There's something behind you? What's going on, Nick? Talk to me. So it sounds like the footsteps were out in the hallway. It just you went from out there to right behind me, like in an instant. It, it kind of caught me off guard, and maybe it satisfied what I was looking for with this experiment. Just heard something in the hallway. It's starting up again. Ashmore Estates brought back a passion 
deep within me that I lost years ago. I've been doing this close to a decade. I've traveled many miles. I've spent many hours in hot and cold buildings. I've communicated with air and silence. I have come up short. I have succeeded along the way. But Ashmore Estates is something greater than I will ever comprehend. This location brought me back to the reason to why I do what I do. There's a lot of videos of me on the internet in the dark chasing ghosts. This is the first one where I've actually jumped at something. This is the first video where I've heard a phantom voice just floating in the air. And it was a child. This is the first video that I've heard footsteps like that. In the 10 plus years I've been doing this, I've never jumped like that. Most people know that I'm a brick on investigations. Ashmore Estates got me good.